What are our top E3 games? Let's count down. Hello and welcome to episode twelve of 12. Triangle Square. The, the finger thing is done. Saw is out of is out of and fingers. Still, I'm just ad libbing. So now, yeah, we just say weird stuff. Uh, I'm stuff. your host Brett Beck, and alongside me are the host Saul Bridges. Uh, this has been a crazy week. Uh, E3, as you know, has been going on all week, uh, and there's been a crazy bit of announcements. Uh, some played it a little more safe than others, but it was still an exciting week overall. It's always a good week. I wish we could have gone to this one, but you know, the first I, one open to the public, right? Yeah, but, you know, I took my vacation at a different time, so we did what we did. Yeah, and you got to go to Kind of Funny Live, which is always good. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, San Francisco was good. That's that's still what I take away from this. I was tired and, and ridiculous last episode, but now that my head's a little clear and I'm not tired and jet lag, I'll tell you this much. The one thing that's true is that we saw your nips. Yes. Uh, you saw my nips. It was for Shadow. Um, and uh, for Bloodborne 2. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. I want that to be also known uh, and it was also very factual that california just feels way better than texas i'm sure it does it's 98 degrees outside right now and the humidity is sky rocketing up yesterday mm. or not yesterday two days it's ago it's been terrible it rained for 20 minutes was sunny for four hours and rained for 20 minutes and that happened every that, ha- that was the same interval throughout the entire day Ugh. So it was nasty and hot and sticky outside. Yep, it's terrible. But if you didn't know, this is Triangle Squared. If you're just now joining us for the first time, uh, we are a PlayStation podcast, and we come out every Monday at 12 p.m. Central Time and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. We are available on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, in case you just want to hear our voices and not see us. You have options. You got options, as we always say, apparently. (laughs) We've started saying it, so if you like options, we got them. Uh, Well, obviously, like I said, it's been a big news week, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the news. Um, There is no drop this week, but I have another surprise topic that will take its place. Okay, well, I didn't know that. We're filled in a little earlier on a Friday than it it typically comes out late Friday night. I will say... um, I'm not going to literally blast the news with everything that's happened to E3. I'm going to go off of a little bit of the more yeah, obscure that stuff. Yeah, would be crazy. Uh, some, like some of the stuff that Shoney showed in their pre-show that a lot of people didn't know about um, until afterwards or some people just still don't know about. Uh, and and some other things that just have interesting extra information. So, uh, yeah, things like God of War and whatnot, not going to go into here. Uh, considering that this is our top five E3 games section, we'll go into those more specifically when we go to talk about the games that we thought... Um, really caught our eye and have our full attention. Um, now, this is something a little different for us. For it being a PlayStation podcast, we actually are not limiting our top five to PlayStation, uh, Sony, E3. It could very well come from oh, Nintendo yeah, yeah, or yeah. Microsoft. Much, much like our favorite PlayStation games, it doesn't matter what they are Yeah. Um, in terms of who makes them either. So, I mean, yeah, there's... And I, and I will say, I think a lot of the games, even including The Last Night, if I'm not mistaken, that was a... Um, it was that's a, one it, of the few games that I thought looked good, but I think that that's a console launch exclusive, right? I'm not sure. See, in 2014, it was originally going to be a PS4 title. And for whatever reason, I guess during the Kickstarter... Microsoft may have bought them out because at the end of that trailer, it actually has the green Xbox and Microsoft at the very end. So oh, yeah, I don't but know that's if, just marketing. Yeah, I don't know if that's their Tom, most likely their Tom foolery again or what. So yeah, all right. Well, we'll go ahead does. and hop into the news. So first things up, and this actually did happen during Microsoft's press conference. So good on them. It was a cool move, uh, and it shows that they're not all just shooters. And you know the stuff that people say about them forever that they're just shooters and racers, uh, which obviously they're more than that. But they do have a bad way of of putting themselves out there as just shooters and, and racers and deserving that reputation yeah obviously. yeah they well th- because they market themselves that way right so the first thing up is square enix have officially announced life is strange before the storm uh this is a prequel to the original game uh and the game looks to touch more on the relationship between rachel and chloe uh if you played the first game then you'll kind of know exactly what i'm talking about so it actually sounds really interesting uh one thing is a side note uh there's two side notes on this um First side note is that the game will not have any kind of powers in it. They purposely are keeping from that, uh, considering that uh, this is this all happens before Max, uh, so they never felt like the powers fit in, and I'm glad. That's a smart move. Uh, the second note is that um, Ashley Birch, uh, the voice actor who did Chloe in the first game and also did Aloy uh, and, and Tiny Tina in Borderlands 2, um, 
also what is it uh what you play in ash or whatever it was yeah, that hey, old ash, what you play yeah. um so she is not going to be reprising uh, her role as chloe in the new life is strange game uh due to uh the sag after strike she's actually doing it in solidarity they offered it uh, and she had to turn it away uh and to stand a- in solidarity but she is uh writing for the character yeah and she's given the uh new voice actor uh, kind of the feel for the character give her yeah she's writing stuff, the dialogue and stuff and saying, cool. is this is this what she would say uh because she felt she felt she says in an interview you know, she feels very close to chloe so that's cool it's good to see um much like you know back at uh psx last year when they did the uh, uh the last of us panel the same thing was said by ashley um i can't remember her name right now johnson i think uh who does ellie uh, yeah and she that, was saying ashley like johnson. you know she really feels like she's she's that character and she knows what that character would do and would yeah do. it makes sense so that's cool uh so let's see uh the game also deals with chloe's transition uh into a troubled teen that you see in the first game uh this lines up with rumors uh that another developer was working on a prequel with don't nod uh, while don't nod work on a proper sequel uh the first episode of the three is set to release on august 31st so that's now, pretty soon let me ask you the um, what's the name of the missing girl in life is strange Rachel. That's what I thought. Okay. I'm only at about 20 minutes into that game, and I thought I remember hearing something about that. I was seeing if that's who that was. Yeah. Kind of connecting the dots. Well, I don't really think it's a spoiler, but if you do consider it one, I apologize. Well, Um, I... I've spoiled it for myself. If that's I kind of want to fly through this, so I'm, I'm going to try and keep the, the go, commentary down. Go I mean, for it. Just letting you know, too, because I, I want to go ahead and hop into the main topic. I'm actually, you know, E3 happens, so I'm excited. So that's I'm just worn how it out. Goes. <laughs> I'm worn out, too, but that's just because of work. Uh, all right, so next up, Deep Silver and 4A Games have revealed Metro Exodus, uh, the follow-up to 2013's excellent... Metro Last Light. I love that game so it much. Is a good game. Uh, the game will feature non-linear levels, which I didn't feel like Last Light really did. To be fair, uh, with its story taking place over a full year, much like The Last of Us, uh, with each season being represented. So no release date was given, but it is slated for next year as it currently stands. So um, it looks great. Yeah, I, I feel like that'll probably end up being a fall game next year. Probably so. I don't think it's gonna be an early. Uh, but who knows? Could be a summer game. Uh, next up, Vicarious Visions have announced a new, exciting addition to Crash Insane Trilogy, in case you haven't heard of it yet. Uh, Coco will now be playable in all three games. Um, and that is, you know, she was originally playable in Warped with her own little levels, like the Great Wall of China level and the uh, little Wave Rider level. Yeah, we were talking, it was Slippery Slope we were talking about, too, and Crash Warped last time or whatever. No. Slippery sled or Sledge. Uh, Ridge, well, that's that's not warp. That's in the first game. You're right. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Um, Excuse me. The developers for that got a reunion and did a panel. It was pretty interesting with Jeff Keighley during Ooh. the during his little E3 Coliseum thing. I do love me so, some Jeff too. Just so y'all remember, the Insane Trilogy does release June 30th, so it's right around the corner, and it will be priced at 39.99, which is a smart, smart move from Activision. Great price. Great, great price. Uh, definitely for something that's remasters, and it's gonna. I really think it's gonna help the game sell a lot more. Oh yeah, of course. Um, People are a lot less, uh, you know, worried about hopping in and spending $60, uh, you know, in comparison to the 40. So, um, next up, Bandai Namco have officially announced a release date for level five's highly anticipated RPG, Nino Kuni two. Uh, We talked about this during the pre-show for our watch along. Uh, the game is set to release this November on the 10th in North America. And for our European viewers, if we have any, the ninth. Um, so they're beating us by day. The bastards. We do get a lot of stuff, though, that they don't get for a while on. So I guess it's some payback. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But then again, they get a lot of cool collector's editions. So. That's true, uh, too. Yeah. Next up, uh, this is another thing that Sony revealed during their pre-show uh, before their E3 conference. Uh, NAC 2 has been officially dated, and alongside the date, we also know that there's a new price point releasing on September 5th. It will also be adopting the thirty-nine ninety-nine price point, uh, which is basically just showing a continued trend of Sony releasing these uh, single-player-oriented games at a very budget conscious cost yeah the first one was ratchet and clink right yeah yeah that's a yeah. good idea that's good. I love great those. idea and technically it wasn't the first one it's the first one in this ps4 run uh they did similar things back when they did uh like i remember telling you sly cooper thieves in time was also 39.99 on ps4 oh, P- i'm on ps3, PS3 when it launched, yeah so. so next up uh keeping with sony uh these next few things are actually sony um everybody's golf uh was also dated or it was also priced i'm sorry it's been dated um Remember, it's dated for 29th of August. We talked about that a little while back, but it is also adopting the 39.99 price point. 
this to me this is part of their aggressive hit against Microsoft because Microsoft isn't doing this as much. They did it with Recore. Um, but yeah, it's been I, that was either a thirty between. or forty dollar game. It was forty. Forty, okay. Yeah. So uh, next up, Gran Turismo Sport, which has been delayed and, and delayed and never got another window. But it, I think it was in beta recently, or it's still in beta. One of the two. Um, anyway, it has a release window still on a date. Uh, so while no hard date was given, the game is aiming at release sometime this fall. So Closer not surprising, we but we'll see. I, I wonder if it's going to be in November trying to go up against stuff because it's a big franchise. It can. It's not as big as it once was, I would say, but it can still stand. Right, so, yeah. Uh, next up, and this is something I was telling you about in the car. I know you kind of missed this, but uh, PlayStation have announced PlayLink for PS4, uh, and this is a, uh, a feature that connects your smartphone or tablet uh, to, the, and, uh, to your TV and PS4 uh, together to play games in a group setting. Uh, the free companion app, free, it's important, that's good. Uh, I figured it would be, but you never know. Uh, makes use of the touchscreen and camera capabilities of your smart device to essentially become a versatile controller uh, with unique input options. Uh, so this next piece of news is going to tie into this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop into it as well. Sony revealed a new game by Supermassive Games, uh, the developer behind Until Dawn. Fantastic game if you played it. Uh, the new IP is called Hidden Agenda, and it's a crime thriller that can be played by yourself or with up to five more friends. So six players. It's very important. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty staggering number, but the way they're doing this one's actually really cool. Uh, anyway, so you link all the the cell phones in, and you do the play link thing, uh, and you vote on the decisions throughout the story that change the way the game plays out, uh, which I think is a really cool idea. So you can play it single player by yourself if you want to, uh, but you can also have your friends go through it. Uh, so the game is slated to release sometime in 2017, much like what they did with uh, Until Dawn. Uh, they announced it and then kind of hit the date. Yeah, that uh, came out early September, didn't it? Uh, Until Dawn. Yeah. Something okay. like that yeah. uh, of 2015. Right, yeah. that was a good. Uh, so thing. no date given, but we will find out eventually. I'm hoping, uh, but I'm hoping soon. But you never know. Gamescom and stuff's coming up. I don't know if Sony has said they're going to do it. I didn't see anything about it, but they've been skipping it the last few years. So uh, next thing up is Dying Light developer Techland has announced that Dying Light will be receiving more DLC. Uh, so for the next 12 months, the team plans on releasing 10 pieces of DLC. The more interesting part of this announcement is that all of the DLC will be free across all platforms. Uh, so cool that they're doing it. Um, this game has been around for so long now. It came out like early 15, right? So they're they're, so. they're really killing it with, uh, with this. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's cool. Um, so the a spokesperson from Techland uh, spoke on the matter, which is interesting. They said continuous uh, support uh, means also more updates, gameplay tweaks, and community events. As we firmly believe in active co uh, collaboration between the design team and players, we hope this announcement will encourage our fans to share their thoughts, stories, and ideas about how we can improve their experience even more. End quote. Uh, so the final piece of news, and I have had a little struggle staying on top of news this week, um, but. Uh, I felt like this was a good chunk of the stuff that I felt was really interesting that wasn't necessarily E3 showcased. Um, but as we've been talking about, the saga continues. Developer IO Interactive, uh, Hitman's developer, yep. have officially became an independent studio. So after negotiations with Square Enix, they settled on a management buyout. Right, which is a and good good thing for them, I think. With this buyout, they retain full rights to the Hitman franchise. Uh, and the way they were, it, it seems like we're going to be expecting some kind of a Hitman announcement soon. Uh, I think they've probably been working on it since the release of the disc version. Uh, yeah. So it's cool to see that it's going to stay and that they're holding the franchise. So um, if you're a, fr uh, a fan of the Hitman franchise, expect some news soon. So that's all I have. Um, okay. Not not. It's a pretty heavy week. There's a lot of stuff that there's uh, a lot, and I mean that's what I'm saying. Well, gotta in, to in case you haven't seen, we do have uh, up on our YouTube, and I debated putting it on SoundCloud, but considering that it's very, uh, it's it's almost reaction oriented, uh, I, I decided to go ahead and keep it. Uh, you know, we did it live on Twitch for our E3 watch along, but we all we went ahead and took that and uploaded it to uh, YouTube as well. So if you want to see a little more of the stuff that happened, you can watch PlayStation's E3 conference. Uh, along with us on our channel and let us know what you think uh, or most likely you've already seen it. Uh, you know, you've already seen the conference at some point. So we'll go into the games that really stood out for us. Uh, but before we do that, what is your little surprise segment to fill in where the, uh, where the drop, drop normally would be. be. Yeah. Okay. So for those that don't know, Brett, if you would look behind us, we have a bevy of collectibles from games. So Brett, my question is 
what is your favorite collector's edition ever to have come out that you have purchased? That I have purchased? Right. So you have to have had purchased it, and it has to be your favorite collector's edition, whether it was with the stuff that came with it or it was any kind of stuff that went along with it. Like, okay. I you know, think content that's interesting. or anything. Um, let me look real quick because I think I, there's a difference between favorite and what I necessarily think is the coolest. Um, I would say that my favorite uh, was probably um, Resistance 2. No, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, not Resistance 2. Infamous 2. My brain. And that came with the... Um, uh, it came with the Cole figure. Yeah. That's back here. Uh, for those, he's been our set piece back when we had our other microphone. Yeah. Um, and back it before came, this was. It came with a backpack, a little messenger bag that looks just like his in the game. It's modeled right after it. It has the, the Sucker Punch uh, Sly logo on the backpack and stuff. I think that's really cool. I like that one a lot. I think it's a mixture between being cool and being practical. And it right. wasn't that expensive. I think it was 119 and there's been plenty of other ones that have been... That price. That, that price not been that have just it. been a statue. Yeah. Um, or not worth it in general. Yeah, so I mean, but I also do think that one of my coolest ones, for those of you who have seen... Uh, who've been able to see it because typically saw is covering it. So if you want to scooch just a little bit, uh, this way or it's my, the Joker. Oh, maybe I can just do this. Microphone's covering it. All right. So it's Joker surrounded by a wall of TVs, TVs. Uh, and you can also change his head out, uh, to be the black mask, uh, which is important for the story reasons of, uh, Arkham origins. Spoilers. And if you, uh, if you turn out, if you put a battery in it, mine's dead right now. Actually, when we moved it back here, I forgot to change it. The TVs turn the on. The TVs turn on, That's and they cool. have like a little static behind them. So I really thought that was interesting. I have a couple of those because the Doom one has a fan and red lights that come up. Yeah, with, like a little vent. And at, at one point, just about all the things behind us have been our set piece, um, which is why a we lot. went with this because I think it works out really well. That it's a universal set piece that it's always there. It has a little branding on it. I just and, think it looks um, cool. To be honest, it does look cool. <laughs> and we and we always had a little two to three minute conversation before each episode of what's our set piece this week. So now it's it's a little time saving, and uh, I think it I think it looks great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But. You know, I, well, do you have? A, you don't typically buy them like I do. So uh, I, I'll I, say, do you have any collector's editions, or do, are you typically more of the ones who buy the collector's item? Well, I I like collector's items as much as uh, the next person. Now, Destiny Two, right around the corner, repping the spicy ramen shirt. Yeah, I really wanted to get the uh, the most premium edition of that sold out. So I settled for the ninety nine dollar collector's edition or or deluxe edition, whatever that is. Yeah. It comes with a steel book. I'm not a huge fan of steel books, um, but you know I like Destiny and I want to support it. So there's my hundred dollars. Um, I really am disappointed I missed out on the first one that came with the ghost because I thought that was really cool. Oh, speaking of which, uh, Cody Parker has that one. He said we can use it for our set piece anytime we want. And I'll it, buy it. It for talks him. to you. I don't. Yes, yeah, I think didn't Seth have it, that? It, uh, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he didn't actually because remember it came with a with a loot box too. Oh, I don't remember that. It at came all. with a chest that the ghost was inside of. Oh, well, I would think that my favorite would be Dark Souls 2. Oh, you did get the collectors for that, yeah. didn't you? I forgot uh, about that. With the, with the, uh, it came statue with the statue of, of um, what's that armor? the Ferrum armor. Yeah, Ferrum armor. armor. Yeah, yeah. So that, I thought that was really cool. And um, That was a really pretty uh, statue. It's huge. I still have it. Yeah, yeah it's huge. It, uh, the sword or shield, whatever it was, it broke off in his hand. So he only has one item in his hand instead of two. But I like it a lot. The My favorite, though. And this is a steel book, which is a completely contradicting what I just said. And all it really was was a steel book. Final Fantasy twelve. Oh yeah, it was a yeah, it was like a, a really, burnt gar- like a really bolt, pretty burnt, one. Yeah, a burnt golden um, case with the Roman numerals on it. And uh, I was that was the first one I ever had, and I was really proud of having that because that game came out October thirty first. I know it's Halloween, like two thousand and six. I don't think the PS three was out, so yeah, five or six would PS three. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought you were talking no, about- no, no. I'm saying like it wasn't out yet. So and then that game came out before the PS3 launch. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna get off of this topic here in a minute. I'm gonna go to you figure out the date. Uh, but you know, I, I I really thought about it. you know what my favorite collector's edition is. What my uh, 20th anniversary PS4. That's technically a collector's yeah. edition. <laughs> well, I said game. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, my game system. Wow, I was really off on that. It's March 2006. I thought that game came out. I didn't think uh, it came out in October, to be fair, but you seem like a man of conviction. I wasn't no, I was 99% you. sure this came out on... Uh, maybe something else for PS2 came out on Halloween that I was really excited for. I don't know. That, that game was sounds weird. like a weird Halloween release, but they've done it. But so. uh, I really like that still book. That was the only still book I've ever really liked. Okay. Um, and I've had a good amount. But 
that was it. That replaced the little four to five minute segment that is the drop that we didn't get to cover this week. So we and apologize. it went more than four to five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not entirely too sure. A lot of people were a fan of the drop. So if we were to ever, you know, get rid of that entirely for something else, well, I don't think too many one, people would One thing we're going to have to try and work in is we've had a couple of people uh, and one man very in particular. Sales figures. Talking I do, about NPD. Yeah, I do figures. like that a lot. Uh, so that's probably going to be something I'll try to work in uh, at the beginning of every month when it's uh, when that the, that data comes out. So it won't be something we talk about literally all the time, but when big moments happen, like Horizon pr- uh, passing 3.8 million or whatever it was sold, uh, that's a big moment for the game. So definitely uh, do mean stuff like that. We'll do that. So, uh, But moving on. I guess it's finally time to talk about the games that impressed us the most at E3. Um, so I know that a little bit of our list is the same. Uh, so with yeah. that being said, um, when we go, you know, whoever starts the list, it's fine. It's only five. So instead of alternating, we're just going to do ours. Uh, I'm going to go all the way through mine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but with that being said, um, when, anytime I talk about mine, um, and if it's on your list too, we just go ahead and have like kind of an open dialogue about it then, and then we'll just skip it when it comes to your list. Okay, that makes Does that sense. That sounds fun because I think we only share and, one. And you can just you can say what, you can say what it is, but we don't have to go into detail about it. So right. I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, do you want to start off, or do you want me to go ahead and go? Um, I think our only if you're ones starting, are, are you starting with this one or this one? I'm going to do the honorable mentions real quick. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do those real quick because I don't have any. Of okay, those. so you know I'm a sucker, and I have such a hard time putting a real value to stuff. Uh, but two games that they showed at E3 in particular, um, I, I feel like they deserve some kind of recognition, so that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. Uh, why, why I feel like I need to include these. Makes um, sense. One of them is what you got to see our, our white pasty nips for, and that is Shadow of the Colossus, uh, the remake. And the reason I want to put it in honorable mentions, I was talking to Saul about it, is that they didn't technically show anything you know it was it was very trailer i really if they would have talked a little more about what they're doing uh, and what kind of changes we can expect because of course it's going to be faithful to the original game uh, rebuilding from the ground up uh, and i trust blue point they're a great developer so i have no you know qualms with them doing it i'm not worried about that but i wish i just wish we could have seen more like a, a, an extended gameplay demo or something would have been cool or a release uh, window so where we can see it well and i mean release window is one thing but i just want more information about the game and what i can expect i, I mean in my mind you know i'm building it up kind of like what the crash uh, insane trilogy is going to oh, is going to yeah. be where it's a very faithful remake but they're still taking a little bit of creative control and saying hey these are things that we think are good ideas uh and they're good and and the the fans so far that they uh, the coco announcement the fans have been behind it can i play as aggro <laughs> the whole game yeah climb up on fucking uh colossi with your horse bite him with my horse teeth yeah with your horse teeth oh man <laughs> and then you yell wonder <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So, Sh- Shadow is my honorable mention. It's my first. And my second one is one that uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people about because it was really interesting looking at And people I work with, I've talked about. Uh, a couple of the people on the Twitter. RJ Loki, I think, uh, talked about it as well. Uh, I could be wrong on that one. Sorry. <laughs> but it's Anthem. Uh, EA's, uh, EO, EA Bioware, uh, their new IP. And the reason I'm going to put that honorable mention as well is I feel like what they showed. <sighs> it was a great trailer. It was because there was a teaser, and, was, and then there was the trailer. And don't get me wrong, and it was gameplay. You know, or yeah. what they were saying was gameplay, but something about that game, I get that gut feeling that I kind of got with uh, Watch Dogs, to where you're watching it and you're like, something just looks too good. Yeah, too good to be true. And you know, you kind of got to go with that too good to be true. You got to follow your gut. Yeah, uh, so, and I, and don't worry. It looks great. I, think. I hope it's not that feeling because, like, you know, you know, when he walks off and he jumps off and he starts flying he, through the thing. Yeah, what if that controls terribly? What? If? Yeah, or no, what if we you don't, don't know? What we if you don't know. control that at all? And that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things, and then you know, it was interesting because it looks like the single player shooter for a while, but then it opens up and it kind of looks like Destiny. And uh, what's the game that you played? I apologize, Ubisoft. Uh, Tom Clancy. Oh, Rainbow Six Siege. No, The Division. Oh. The Division. It looks like that kind of uh, online hub-oriented one. Um, to where both I'm, Ubisoft. <laughs> Ubisoft Tom Clancy games, just just to say you oh, know. Yeah, to oh, be that's fair, all I said, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't specify that I was talking about these online social right, aspect yeah. games. Uh, so those two games, I think Anthem looks cool. I think it looks really good, but I do think it looks too good. And we didn't hear enough about it. We heard a, we heard a good amount. But we didn't hear enough to sell me on its potential. So I think we have to wait, see a little more. I want to see real time gameplay where I'm, I can I can tell somebody going over it if, uh, uh, and see HUDs and stuff. And because that, that was another thing that was kind of weird about some of these games is like they didn't have the HUD on for some reason. And if if like Monster Hunter didn't have the HUD on, 
was, which was weird. It uh, was really weird because Monster Hunter no has that big old green health bar across the top. Yeah, I mean, and very everything. very UI oriented. If there's so. any game that's going to get stuck into a release date purgatory, I think it would be Anthem. I, I to agree. Be fair. That that game, if anything, that game reminded me of like Huxley and all these other games that were that never got release dates and then became free to play years later. Yeah, maybe. So um, I want it to be really good, and I hope it's really good. I just hope my feelings wrong for that. So you have no honorable mentions, right? I I can make one on the spot. Which if, if you have one, go for it. Okay. So during the um, Nintendo press conference, this is only an honorable mention because. There was no gameplay. Metroid there was Prime. Metroid Prime Four. I was. Stood. There was no gameplay. I want to be real with you. I, you. So many people lost their mind about that and said they won just because of that. No. No, they didn't win no. because of that. Because there's nothing there. There's nothing to win for. You it don't even. Become, you don't even know who's developing it. See, if it was retro and they announced it, then no, you at least know that there's th- some kind of hints behind yeah. the quality. Right now, it's literally just a name. Now I know that uh, Ret- now, Samus's Return. They're having the same level designer from uh, from uh, Fusion and Zero Suit Samus. Well, cool. That's uh, good. Or Metroid uh, Metroid Zero. Zero. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's brought well, back that some looks nostalgia. Great. That looks great. Oh, you talking about, uh, uh, Metro, yeah, uh it's Sandwich Returns? Sandwich it does. Returns. It yeah. It, it does look great. Um, wish it was coming to switch. I, I really do too. Um, I may want to pick up a new 2ds XL to play some of these new 2d or 3ds games. I refuse. It's so cheap. And, uh, <laughs> And Annie's kind of taking my new 3DS for an Animal Crossing machine, so I don't know if I can reclaim that back. Because yeah. uh, we still have the 2DS laying around, but, you know, I, I, I really like the, the new The clamshell 3DS. design looks, it feels a lot better, too. But it does. That is a system I do want to leave in the dust. It's just, I don't have the memories that I have with something like the PSP that was a little harder to let go of. Um, I think that, that, it's, that system's a little uncomfortable, and its graphics are kind of ugly. The only game that I really have a real good bond with uh, is Rune Factory 4. So That was a great game. Leave that away. I mean, I love Pokemon, but, you know, it is what it is. So those are my honorable mentions, and that's not a bad honorable mention. I was very disappointed when they didn't show anything past that. Yeah. It was all just, hey, here's a hype train. Hop on. A trailer reel. Trailer yeah. reel after trailer reel is okay. all that was. Well, going into my first, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, be aware this is a PlayStation podcast. Obviously, uh, I think it's safe to say at this point that these are our preferred systems. Right. Uh, so it's not that weird that the majority of our list is going to end up. And the way I'm looking at it is that a way out was the Ubisoft one, right? EA. EA. I mean, yeah, that's right, because Far Cry. No. It, Far Cry is Ubisoft. Okay, never mind. I keep thinking A Way Out was... Is that not the Prison Break game? Yeah, kind of. And it, it was during EA's... Uh, and it's, it's for split screen? Yeah, but hold on. We'll talk about it in a second. Yeah, so, go ahead. first thing on my list, uh, and, and this is not surprising at all, I'm a huge fan of the God of War franchise. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Kratos being a one-dimensional person, uh, and I think that, you know, people are a little too unfair on him. I don't think he's a one-dimensional per- a character, but he's often in this one dimension. Uh, but he has moments of, of weakness and moments of uh, relatability about him uh, that happen a lot throughout the series. I think one of them is in the first game. Uh, definitely from a mechanical standpoint, it was a really cool thing to see, and I think it w- it also humanized Kratos as a character a little bit. And sorry, that's a little bit of my God of War history and why I love it so much. Uh, uh, in the first game, this is technically a little bit of a spoiler, but there's a part in the game where uh, you're in this like dream world thing and you're seeing your wife and kid uh, and you're having to protect them. Uh, and it's, it's weird because what you actually have to do is like you have to hug them. That's the game mechanic. I forgot about that. And, I, and you know, people talk about all the time, like Kratos is just mad. He's just mad. He's not a human. He doesn't have human qualities. That is a perfect example. Uh, and, and Kratos wanted to kill himself at the beginning of the game. Was he covered in ash in that dream sequence? He's covered in ash and everything. No, no, no. I just I thought he was still covered in ash in that dream sequence. He was. My mom he was. was it's literally no. a dream sequence. Yeah. Uh, and and or you know weird like I don't know I don't want to call it a dream sequence but kind of. Uh, but I see that that was the first moment where definitely when people say that Kratos is just angry. Yes, that is his most notable uh, personality trait. Which. Four does a very good job of giving him more emotions. The new one. With yeah. bonding with his but, son. But I do want to say, again, these are other things. If you've played the PSP God of War games, this is another chance of seeing that Kratos is not just one-dimensional. There's a part in uh, in one of the PSP games. Chains of Olympus. I, I want to say it's Chains of Olympus. That sounds right. Uh, where you go. Um, oh, I forgot there was two. You go to Elysium and you see your daughter in Elysium because, you know, that's where How? your daughter. Elysium is where they go after they're gone. Uh, and you find your daughter. Oh. And your daughter, you see your daughter, you have a conversation with her. I was thinking and Valhalla. It's a moment where the game really capitalizes on Kratos being a human. Um, and, and what that is, is that, you know, she tells you, she asks you not to go, but you know that if you don't go, that she'll be lost forever. So you can spend the time with her you want, but Elysium's going to collapse. 
it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, but the game did a really good job of kind of pulling on your heartstrings of like, definitely if you played the first game and you kind of know where he stood at with Calliope uh, and his wife, but more so Cal- Calliope, because they've already played a little bit of the father figure thing with him. Yeah. Uh, it was really interesting to see um, that really emotional side of him. And then you saw the same thing happen in God of War 3. Um where uh, God of War 3 is where he's at his angriest. I mean, that game is very brutal. And that's the one I but, haven't played. And it's not going to be a, a real big thing, but there's this girl, Pandora, right? Uh, who, you, who finds you, and she's asking for your help. And throughout the game, some stuff happens, and you eventually get to a point where she's around you, and you can kind of tell it's the same thing that happens with Joel in The Last of Us, where he's pushing her away because he doesn't... He, he wants to protect her. He, do, he, he wants to protect himself from her right he doesn't want to let himself he, she's young you know he, he, you can tell it's like it reminds him of his daughter being around this kid makes him think of the mistakes he's made right and he's trying to keep from getting close to her and then seeing her have a any form of similar demise uh, or similar fate uh, and it was a really cool moment and i also think another moment and this will be the last of it before we go into this talking about god of war uh the new one for ps4 uh at the end of three there's this moment where you go into I guess I want to say your, your mind. Uh, and it's like, there's black all around. Uh, and, um, Pandora is like talking to you and like leading you through. And like, you, you're following this trail of blood that's glowing and you're black. And the only thing that's visible on you is the red of your, of uh, your marking. Yeah. Um, and as you're going through, you see all the things you've done. You see some of the mistakes you've made like with your wife and kid. You see these things, you see her, uh, you, you, you continue to go through. And it's like, you're wandering through the darkness, trying to find yourself, uh, and I think that it culminates in such a great part of the game because when everything is said and done at the very end of the game, he looks at what he did and he realizes like, what did that really fix? And, yeah. and, and I'm not going to say anymore cause you haven't played it and I want you to borrow it. I want to make sure I do have it. I do yeah, have it. God of War three. Cause they don't have the, they don't have one, one and two on PS three. They don't. PS four. Three is such a good game. Okay. As it stands, I played one and two. It's just as been it a stands, long time. Currently, the best game in the series. Okay. By far, uh, and and I think that I'm not going to ruin it for you because I want I want you to see the end. But the way the whole thing wraps up is great. I mean, fantastic. And I actually kind of wish, even though I thought Ascension was a fun game, that Ascension wouldn't have come out and kind of sullied that if that was going to be the last God of War. But luckily, that, it's that not. was the God of War game with multiplayer, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. And it wasn't bad. It was is a prequel though, and prequels are hard to tell when you know how a story ends. Because that's the difference, yeah. is that it wasn't a prequel after they did one, because the PSP games were prequels in their own rights, but they worked. I can agree to that. Uh, whereas once the story was done and three was like the end cap to this arc, you felt like, why is this necessary? And, and it felt like the story was stupid. So going into God of War, much like you said, I do think it's great that they're showing a little more of Kratos and trying to pull out that emotional side more and let that be a focus. Uh, whereas I think before it wasn't necessarily an afterthought, but the gameplay and the game design and the scale and the, the way that game is put together as a whole was very much an, an, an importance. And I do think that Kratos, as an angry figure, who had every right in the world to be angry, by the way, uh, with everything that happened to him, it's not, I thought it was another human aspect of him. It's not hard to, to look at what happened to him in his life and think that that's not that's not fair he he has the ability to go and change this or at least to get his vengeance for it and it's not that weird to think that he would want to do that so right with this game i I like that they're touching on that i like that they uh, are pulling away from the chains of chaos uh the blaze of chaos sorry uh and i think that's interesting a because um you know him having if you notice he has little markings on his arm yeah or he has he has covers on his arms and i think he's covering the markings so that lets people know who he is but as you can tell throughout the trailer that they showed people know who he is yeah, yeah, his history is known. Um, but I do think that this game is as much about him trying to forget about his past and move on and make a different life for himself as possible. And I think that the son coming in and him being forced to spend time with the son, right? In this you way, see some actual emotions and bonding. it's going to pull a different way because I think we're going to see a similar journey, uh, at least in terms of character development, as we did with Ellie, where you know over time you're going to really come to you as a person as a, as the player are going to come uh but you know i do think this is a moment where it's kind of like your kratos to an extent but it's also just seeing kratos the story but you're going to come to feel like kratos uh if you're going to feel bad for him and feel good for him all at the same time it's like you know i understand why he's feeling this so i think the game from a narrative standpoint from a gameplay standpoint and everything just looks fantastic and if you haven't seen the trailer i very much urge you to go watch it it's yeah. beautiful and uh that's to save you no time that is on my list that was actually and kind of well done enough is was my number five so we could actually 
correlate or parallel to me here where, you know, playing the first game, being on the ship in the beginning, fighting the Hydra in the very beginning, that stuff was amazing, and yeah. I'm ready to go do it again. And I think it looks very well polished. I think the gameplay, we got more of it, and it looks great. You get to see him use the axe. You get to see the, the I forgot what that dragon's called in Norse, uh, the, the very last thing. The serpent thing? Yeah, the, yeah, the world know. serpent is what that thing's called. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, I'm really excited for that game. Okay. I want to. I really do want to play three real soon. And if you still have it, which you yeah. said you did, right? yeah, I do. I try I'm gonna that. borrow that tonight because I'm gonna play that and maybe Evil with him. And it's not a too terribly long game, but I'll tell you, you you'll never feel more epic than when you're playing that game. And well, to end to end to kind of an off topic credit here, I couldn't even get past Dark Siders one. Because that game felt really dated. Really? I didn't play it back then, so I couldn't play it now. So the nostalgia aspect's not hitting you? Dark Siders, uh, yeah. I will say no Dark Siders nostal- 2 no because nostalgia. it's different. You should, play, you should try Dark Siders 2 because Dark Siders 2 controls a lot better. And, okay. it's, and it's, it's got more modern game design. Uh, yeah, that game so. felt like, I don't know, I couldn't tell what it was. Okay, well, we've rambled on on that game, but I do love God of War. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Yeah. So the next game I'm not going to spend too terribly long on. It's A Way Out, uh, and that's uh, by Hazelight Studios. Now, this is uh, the people who made Brothers. Um, which was the old game where you know you controlled uh, two different protagonists, one with each analog stick, uh, and it was a really cool. interesting game. So what they're doing is they're kind of moving forward with that idea, and they're looking at it from an aspect of okay, we're not going to have one player directly control two people. We're going to make a, 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 a experience that you have to play co-op. Yeah, and it looks good too, and it looks like you have to fight with a person or fight like you know conversate well, and yeah, it work looks like, together. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of uh, in a good way. There's going to be some uh, some back and forth in terms of the way y'all feel about each other and strategies and Cause stuff. I feel like it's like, you know, you get that team aspect going, but at the same time, it's like at, at certain points it is like, hey, I'm just using, you need to get out of here. So, yeah, uh, that's true. But I, I, what I like about the game is everything they showed, um, is it looks like the kind of experience that uncharted is. Uh, and it Excuse looks me. like it being, uh, given a co-op treatment in a, in a very interesting way. Because uh, we never saw co-op truly in the story, you know, we saw co-op modes uh, in in Uncharted, but we didn't see actual uh, work together story. And I think that there's a lot of stuff that games is doing that I think is a really cool idea. Like one thing I mentioned to you in the pre-show, but when we were doing the Sony conference of the day, is that uh, one of the things the way out's doing is that like uh, when one of the characters is in a cutscene, that's the brilliant. other character if he he's not in the cutscene, you know, so his or if if he's not like so say that you're away and you're in a different area and this guy's there, his cutscene plays, uh, but my cutscene doesn't if I'm the guy and I can just keep walking around. And, and I bet you thing. thinking about it, I bet you can obtain knowledge from watching the other player's cutscene about something, you know, like whether yeah, it's a guard you can, you can walk up and see the cutscene happening in real time. That's cool. But they showed the guys getting talked to and they see all the camera cuts and everything going on and you see the guy getting talked to like in a line of prisoners and stuff and you see the other guy walking up on one of the uh, upper levels and he, and, he, and he looks down and he can see the guy talking to the guy. So here's my question. Is it if I, is there a way to put yourself in the cutscene? Maybe. I don't That'd know. That'd be cool. They didn't talk about <laughs> That'd it a be lot. really cool actually. Uh, and I didn't get to actually continue seeing as much of this as I wanted to, but I think the game looks great. And I think the designer of the game has got a lot of interesting ideas. Uh, so I want to see how the game turns out. Cause like uh, even the main picture they're showing is like, you know, them working together to crop a shaft using each other's backs and legs. Yeah. So interesting, but I, I do think it's going to be a, a cool story. And I think it'll, if done completely right, it'll be a similar experience to uh, uncharted. Uh, and that's cool. Cause a narrative experience like that is not Shawshank super common. So. In the game. Yeah, so the next one up I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, is Hidden Agenda, and this is by uh, Supermassive Games. These are the people that developed Until Dawn. Uh, I talked about that in the in the uh, news. Pre-show. Yeah, we talked oh, well, no, yeah, we talk about too. the news. Yeah. Uh, and this is that PlayLink game. So what I think is cool about this game is that obviously as a fan of Heavy Rain and uh, Until Dawn, these are both uh, m- multiple character uh, control, you know, you see you have multiple pra- protagonists, uh, and as you go out, different things can happen to them, and the decisions change the way that the world ends up working. So what I like about it is that it reminds me of of everything I liked about Until Dawn and uh, Heavy Rain, while even kind of pulling on the Heavy Rain thing because it's a crime thriller. And Heavy Rain was a little more of a psychological thriller, but it had similar it had similar uh, pacing things, like because there was cops involved with an FBI, and there's different things um, that come together in that. So it had a, yeah. a feel of crime thriller while also being psychological thriller. Um, so I'm interested to see, oops, how that's going to work. Um, 
And I think that the PlayLink initiative is a good idea. I'm probably still going to play the game by myself, but I do think that it, it lends itself to replaying being a little more fun because you don't yeah. have control. Because then you can go and do these You can be like, hey, things. let's all six sit here and watch this movie, basically. Right. It's an experience. And like, we're going we're gonna to vote every time something comes up. And either we can talk about it and find out what we as a group think is best. So can everybody do, do that? Everybody, or just, everybody can vote separately. So even the player? Yeah. Okay. So everybody, vote, everybody votes separately. So you can either choose to talk. And then just, you know, talk about what you want to do and then just trust everybody's going to do that. Or you can play the game and kind of just keep it. Don't talk. Just do what you want. Yeah, that's and, pretty and, cool and, too. And kind of see how it turns out. So I think that's a good idea. And I also think Supermassive are a great developer. Um, so and they were talking about making something after Until Dawn. And I'm glad that this is most likely it. Yeah. Um, and then you got the prequel, Inpatient. Yeah, the Inpatient, kinda, which is a 60, 60 years prior to the events of Until Dawn in the same world. So that's cool as well. Uh, so the next thing up, and I know this is actually on your list, right? Detroit. Right, yes. Okay, so Detroit Become Human. Now, this is much for the same reason of why I said Hidden Agenda. These games speak to me. I love them. They're very, so very narrative-driven. The they have story. such interesting ways of playing the game with you. Because, I mean, I think Heavy Rain is still one of the best PS3 games of the last generation. Did, now, how did that... Uh, this is a, kind of off topic. How did that port to PS4? Great. Really? People think it looks beautiful and it runs well. Still have never played it. May have to play it. Yeah, I mean, I saw screenshots. Man, for how... for how, That game came out in 2010. It looks good. Uh, Beyond looks even better, but, you know... Beyond wasn't as good as Heavy Rain, though. It right? wasn't. I okay. feel like it's a good game. I heard that's I the general say, consensus on that. Well, the PS4 port's better because it let you play the game in chronological order instead of this weird... The PS3 version bounced between different timelines. So, like, you're a kid one minute, then you're an adult, I like you're that. you're a teenager. I like that when they do that in films and, and other video games. No, no, in films and other video games where they do it right, yes, but they're, oh. this screwed the narrative thread. This did do, they didn't do it right. Yeah, they screwed the <laughs> okay. narrative thread. So, it, it played, and everybody said pretty much, it plays a lot better where you have a consistent narrative thread. Well, See, in Detroit, it's so The cool part, intriguing. though, I will say every part of the game is like different in Beyond. Oh, Beyond? Yeah, so it's like uh, one part's kind of like a survival horror aspects to it. It's like really creepy. It's crazy looking. That's kind of cool. And then one's like a supernatural thriller. So it's worth playing through. Just play yeah, through, no, it's, it's a cool game. Play through Heavy Rain first. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. But Detroit Become Human, man. We got three character trailers. Is that all we've gotten, really? Yeah, um, but they talked about two new characters in this new one, so yeah. I think that that's probably going to round out the group. I would imagine they're going to do four again. What was his name, Marcus? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, and then the and I can't remember the girl's name, to be fair. I didn't take great notes, but I do think the the trailer was very pulling. It had a lot of cool info. Like it, it gave a good side that we haven't seen yet. You know, the last character trailer was more about the decisions and how the game world changed and how all these different things come together, which was great, and I think he was a cool character. Kara, uh, Kara's, or Kara, whatever you want to call her, yeah. hers was also really cool. It was, really, it was super interesting. And that the was the first was one, right? Uh, that was the very first one when they okay. announced the game at Paris Games Week. So seeing this one, I feel like, I will say this, the game looks great. I'm ready. I'm excited for it. I hope we don't see it at another E3. I hope we don't really see it at another event. PSX, I'd be okay because uh, it's PSX. It's fan-oriented, but past I that. almost hope we don't get another trailer. This is one of those I, games. I, I'm in this this is one of those games that I feel would be best going in completely blind from what we've seen here. Yeah, and this is enough to, yeah. to pull you in because I'm intrigued by the story enough to play through it, and I'm really really curious to what it is without having to. I don't want any more elements potentially spoiled by trailers that have yeah, been I'd, so I'd, common I'd of a move lately. I would agree. So uh, one of the other things I want to talk about, and this is the last one on my list, uh, and I, this actually might surprise you a little bit, but I think the game was like really good. I, it did uh, surprise so me. So Life is Strange Before the Storm. Right. Uh, and this one is not being developed by Don't Nod, uh, just for you people that don't know. This is being developed by Deck Nine Games, uh, So and it's still being published by Square Enix. They still own the rights to it. Um, but this is not the sequel. It's very important to say this is not the sequel that Don't Nod announced that they were working on. This is a uh, prequel, 100%. Like I talked about in the news, this happens before the events of the first game. Uh, I just think as you continue to watch the game, even with Ashley Birch not being able to reprise her role, I think that we're seeing enough, uh, the way that they're trying to handle the relationships and stuff, if they handle dialogue and it looks like they are, um, in the same way, while not having to necessarily, even though I love the aspect of being able to go back in time, it just added a neat feel to a narrative game that you don't normally get. Yeah. Uh, and you can kind of explore different options without having to stick to them. That was another thing I liked about yeah, it. That's true. Uh, I do like to see this, though, because I, I do think I, I got close to Chloe as well uh, throughout the events of the first game. So going back and kind of seeing this, I think it was an interesting move because so, it's only three episodes. Uh, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I very well could be, I want to say that they were talking about if you pre-order or you do something in a specific way, that there is a fourth episode that's going to be free, uh, and it's going to be called Farewell. And it's going to be about the events of Max after the events of the first game. So my question is, is that as somebody who's you know, only 30 minutes into the first game, I'm not far, I got, I got maybe past the first arc uh, of the story. Yeah. Now, 
Who is a character that stuck with you longer, Max or Chloe? Max, uh, and that's because you you go through more with Max. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you are because you are Max. Yeah, you you play you you control Max. So yeah. there's more events to happen that you, you feel you feel bad for, and in a way, uh, definitely with the, how you make your decisions, I think that it'll determine how you feel about Max in in, in some ways, which is interesting because you're making decision. Um, but at the same time, I do want to say like. Chloe was a real standout character, uh, and and she was realistically the second most important character in the game. It's very, right, it's very yeah. built on their friendship. Yeah, because you can uh, t- and they're coming back together, so that's interesting. And seeing that happen is really cool. So I don't want to spoil too much outside of that, but that game looks great to me, and that's why I'm excited for it. Definitely, if there is this farewell chapter where you get to see the events of uh, what happens afterwards. Got um, it. All right, uh, what's yours? So I guess that leads. You know, we went through Detroit. We went through God of War. Yeah. So that leaves three for me. So. I'm actually I'm a little surprised by your list. Yeah, and see, I kind of am too, because kind of not being necessarily let down, but being kind of just whelmed with this E3. I would have expected this list to have Bloodborne two whelmed. on it, Demon Souls two, Demon Souls something. When you first said that, it made me laugh, and <laughs> it still makes oh, me laugh. Sorry, I was just I was just whelmed. I wasn't under. I wasn't over. I was just whelmed. But mine is in order, um, despite what I typed. It's the exact opposite order. So number three on my list, counting down to number one. Number three would be The Last Night. Okay. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of this game when they first talked about it back almost three years ago, maybe even three years ago. And then the whole Kickstarter thing with it, um, I was really excited to see this game. And, I, and when I finally saw this trailer, which you kind of already got a little bit of art from back then, back two and a half, three years ago, finally seeing this trailer and, you know, getting everything out of that trailer that I wanted, I was super excited for it. It's going to be one of those games I for sure buy. And I do want you to know real quick. It is a console launch exclusive. Console launch exclusive. To so be it honest, will come to PS4. To be honest, I will play this game on PC. I'll play this game the day it comes out on PC. Because you want it that Because I want it that I bad. think the art style looks dope. It is it looks really amazing. pretty. amazing. Yeah. Um, I am so excited for that game. And I think this is a good move on Microsoft's part. Because I feel like they were finally showing games that, like I was saying in the beginning... This, these are games that are not their typical thing. Right, And yeah. Sea of Thieves was a little bit of they're, that, they're, but uh, we're seeing which more. Which looks great. That almost made the list for me, too. There's so many pirate games at C3, though. There's two. Cross and Bones in that. No. Uh, Is there a third there's one? another one. I can't remember what the hell it was called, but like Trifon or something. Oh, I, I can't know. remember what it was Sea of Thieves looks the best to me. Um, there's things, but I really need to know if there's more to that game. So I'm not going to go off right. too much on that limit. The, my uh, problem is that if the game ends up being like Minecraft where there's not a real, like if there's bosses or something like that where we can all go together and do it, that's cool. In Sea of Thieves? Yeah. If, there's, kind of if there's not to that. really an end game, then I don't care. It kind of alluded. Because I get bored of that. Gets, well, when you're in the cave, they shine a lot on like a cave painting. It looked like kind of like a Cthulhu type thing. That I thought that was cool and that may be a potentially a boss. Um, I would hope. But, the last night, you know, super great looking game, and I'm gonna play it the day it comes out. Number two on my list, almost said number four, but number two on my list would be Monster Hunter World. Haven't played a Monster Hunter game in a long time. Tried to put some time in on the 3DS version when I had the original 3DS XL with the Circle Pad Pro, and it's just something about that game. No matter what you tried with that game and the controls, I couldn't get used to it, and. You know, following Destiny, Monster Hunter is a game I like. It's a grindy type game that you can play with friends. And you can have these experiences with these people that you you love hanging out with. And I think that's what this is going to be. You know, there's a little repetition in there. And there's a little bit of newness and exploring new worlds, fighting new monsters. And I'm hoping that I saw somewhere that, that said that traps and stuff like that weren't going to be a, a big thing. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping that. You know, I'm hoping it's going to be a traditional Monster Hunter style We'll game. see, because it's, it's open world. It's very different. It's, it's going very different way. One thing I thought was cool is that you can do it like normal. You don't have to choose a mission anymore and go out on the mission. Uh, oh, really? They're, they're kind of just in the world, and you have them looking like it looks like a quest log kind of thing. That's kind of cool. Um, but one other cool thing is that, like, so you can drop in and drop out of co-op at any moment. Uh, even if you're in the middle of a fight. Yeah. Uh, and another cool thing you can do is if you're in the middle of a fight and you don't already have somebody who's around. You could get them in there. You can shoot a flare. Right. And anyone else who has agreed to do the helping thing. They'll come. It's kind of like, a, it's kinda your like you're a soapstone in Dark Souls. You, you write it down and if somebody sees it, they're like, I'm going to help that dude yeah, out. Yeah, kind of. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And uh, I'm really excited. Hopefully, uh, I know you'll probably pick it up. And uh, maybe we can convince Blaze to pick it up. The other, the other dude over here at this channel with us. And um, we can all play it together. But number one on my list, 
Shadows of the Colossus or Shadow of the Colossus. Shadows. Um, I keep I always say shadows for some reason. Because you just uh, like to add stuff, so it's okay. These I, add, don't I add words to things that should or letters have, or letters. Yeah, there'd be a song title, and I'll add two or three words to it. Um, but you know, Shadow going back to the PS2 style days of like my favorite favorite time when PlayStation is in the, other than now is in PS2 days, and you know, watching one of my best friends. That was one of those games that. When you think back to these old school games like this and Zelda where you're talking about secret things with your friends because you don't have access to the internet. And, I'm assuming Big Seth. Right. And watching him climb up the shrine with his uh, – because he had so much And go so to the Forbidden stamina. Garden. Yeah. And it was just like – and then, you know, when you're playing on your own and you have the collectibles like all the fruit trees and you have uh, – what was it? The uh, is white tail lizards or white lizards yeah. in that game? Yeah, white tail lizards. White tail lizards. It, it, it's mind-blowing for somebody my age. It uh, was very interesting then. mechanically. And, well, see, and back then it's – you. You got you you got in the world, and then you got aggro, and then you start dri- like driving around, riding around on your horse, and you're like, "Where are the enemies at?" Your horse with wheels. Yeah, it's like where like where are the enemies at? And then because the world feels so empty. Yeah, and then you hold up your sword, and it guides you to that very first boss spot, and then it's there, and you're like, "Whoa, that's, <laughs> you're like, this is a big boss." That is a very special game. It is, and uh, the and, first, and it was. A, I don't know. I'm not going to say as far as it, it was the first, but it was the first uh, definitely mainstream, big, and still kind of niche. Um, Niche, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that was probably the first game I saw that kind of did the boss rush style. Where literally it's boss, 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 boss. There's no enemies besides that. Unless you go out of your way to shoot birds or shoot the uh, or shoot the lizards. Certainly on a console. I'm sure there's something in an arcade or um, on a on, PC on a computer. Back then. Yeah, probably. Um, but, you know, that the game, I never actually owned it. I always bought it from Seth because, you know, we were, I was 13. I wasn't in high school yet uh, when that game and I'm 26 now, so I, that had to have been like I didn't have a job, so like and I couldn't get every game that came out. So I definitely bought it from him a number of times. Last and time, the last time I played it was the uh, PS3 the, collection I have down there. And uh, see, I, I never got that. I did play beautiful. it beautiful back at your old house one time. We were hanging out, um, but I don't really remember anything of it. It was the uh, turtle boss. We were yeah, fighting. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so man, you know what I'm super excited to see. Oh. You know the boss that has like the wings that flies around in the air with you in the desert, dude. Uh, no, it's in the lake, right? The big winged thing that comes out of the lake has moss on its wings. As you're, I'm thinking of the one you climb on top of off of the desert. See, because there's two different ones, and that Am might, I maybe that I, wrong? maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Because remember, there's two that I feel like in the water, and they start in, they start in similar ways, but then they go because there's one that stays in the water. Yeah, and, and then there's, there's one that like comes out of the water. And he's who kind of glides around, above or at the least, water, or at least he's around water when you find him. Yeah, because now now you have me questioning my yeah, sanity. Super cool boss fight though, and then of course the last Colossus. Dude, I'm not gonna say nothing about that. Me either. The people who haven't played that game. But can you imagine that boss fight? That's gonna be Woo! amazing in 4K. Man, um, that's gonna be amazing with with finally just new controls. Uh, well, that's see, I mean, to be honest, to. I feel like again, you know, a lot of people gave the Last Guardian shit for it, uh, but I thought that honestly speaking, there wasn't anything wrong with those controls. There, you you can get them, and you can understand them, and that's all that really matters. I don't wrong. It could be easier. It could be better. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of in the desert. Yeah, the, or sand. The, I guess it kind yeah. of floats around the top of the sand. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm talking about the one with big wings and it's got like moss and stuff uh, on that, it. And that, then it, you you grip the moss, wasn't there, because it starts flying and you'll it'll knock you off. And like, wasn't there like multiple mounds above the water? Then you could fall into the water around them that you could stand on top of. Yeah. Okay, I think I remember that one pretty well. Yeah. So th- there's a couple of them. It's like, man, mechanically speaking, how's this going to work out? Because or, uh, how's it going to look? And how's it's it going to feel? Gorgeous. What they've showed so far is gorgeous. And I completely trust Bluepoint. They're the ones that handle the HD remaster, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, so, but I guess that's it, right? Yeah, that's the. Uh, well, this was going to be kind of a short episode. We ended up almost hitting the typical. You know, we try to only waste an hour of you guys' time. Yeah, if, waste. Uh, that's it. Waste. Yeah, I was going to say if that's what you guys operative like word. Um, but you know, this is a. Uh, we're finally done with E three week. We can probably go back to a little bit more casual topics for the next couple. You know, we'll see. We kind of got a couple topics we're talking about here and there. Well, I do want to call back to a, to an older episode. Uh, one thing, um, right. is specifically speaking about a Shadow Colossus. Uh, this goes back to the last episode uh, where I, I apologize for rambling on a lot. I was very tired and jet lagged. I just it, really, it probably. Probably shouldn't have done it that day, but oh well, kind of yeah, needed to. Kinda, yeah, uh, yeah. It was the only way we we're going to get it up. And, and that's, that's a little more of our, of our important part. And of course, that means sometimes maybe our quality may go down, uh, but we really are aiming to constantly hit our release schedule. And that's important to us. Uh, and we're going to do every time whatever it takes to make sure that we hit that release schedule. Uh, and it's going to get better about it. But and in, the uh, blue in that moon. episode, 
I did want. I, I did mention that uh, you know you're seeing these games come back in this very faithful remake, and you know we talked about it with Sonic uh, Mania. We see it with uh, Crash with Crash Bandicoot. We've seen it with a couple of things here recently uh, with games that are either remaking themselves and being faithful, or coming back in a, sli- a style that's so reminiscent that you don't even notice a difference. Like Sonic right. Mania feels like a sequel almost, or, or it like, does. So, yeah, it, it feels like a, it, and, I, and I would guess like you probably say it is, but I think it's interesting that Shadow of Colossus builds on this list now. This yeah. is another example, and I would have never um, believed it when you told me that. On and the way then to actually, Walmart, another one did not believe a, a it. Perfectly another one, a perfect another example is Samus Returns. Right? Yeah, these are more, going back to these are more games that are taking a game that you've seen, being faithful to it, but adding things that yep. are necessary, and going back to Metroid uh, Fusion, and, and yeah. And I think the other cool thing is like a lot like Crash Bandicoot did, and uh, I was talking with Dan, he's a host over on Square XO, their yeah. Euro- European PlayStation podcast, uh, and we were talking about like you know, and he said it, and I, could, I mean, and literally, I thought as soon as I saw it too, when I watched it, what made me feel so good about it is that. It's, a lot of people have said it about Crash, but it's exactly how you remember that game looking on PS2 when you played it back then. Now, obviously, it's not. If you go back and look at the PS2 version, yeah. you're like, oh, my Lord, this doesn't look near as good. It's very grainy, washed out. The game is. It looked good for the time, and you it say, had a lot of good technology. You said Crash. You mean Shadow. Shadow. Sorry. Yeah, I was like, I, said, I, was like, I, mean, I thought I said. I was like, wait, I was like, Crash. I thought, I thought people, grainy. Yeah, I thought people said that. I thought I said that people said it about also, Crash as well. I'm but very no. jealous of Dan. Dude has Hideo Kojima in his Twitter picture. Dude, did you see the Nier Automata PS1 case he made? It's beautiful. I like. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, I'll, Dan. I'll tell you right you now. You want to send me one of those? But I'll, no, I'll buy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I'll buy some for my gaming room. At we home, were discussing the the legality. We'll buy some and we'll put them in the display case behind us to show off for sure because they are gorgeous. And yeah, the legality thing. I did see that he said Etsy doesn't really care. Etsy might not care. Sony might, <laughs> and they might come after. It wouldn't be Sony so be Square if it, if we're getting that one. Sony might for the other yeah. one because he did a Crash Bandicoot case that looked dope too. And it, yeah, he did. because oh, the Last so of Us good. one looked good, and then the Metal Gear Solid one. Wait, did he I, use? You, I think he used the Definitive Edition Metal Gear Solid. I think 5 so. One. Yeah, yeah, which is what I'm know. playing currently. I saw. Which we we uh we might want to go to that little thing because we uh we skipped want, it. Yeah, I, we did. I'm, I'm about to beat East Origin. That's all I've played besides a little bit of Diablo. I've been, I've been busy. I've been playing. Yeah, I was gonna say, I've been playing Metal Gear Solid Five again because I love that um, game. So okay, well, you know what? I'm interested in what y'all thought. I, I, I've put it out on Twitter once, and I've had a couple of responses that I, I thought were cool. Um, people just, oh, what games made you excited? That, that's what I want to know. I mean, we we sat here and wasted your time about it, but let us know. I mean, if you want to tweet us, you want to leave it in the comments down below. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but I would like to know because I think that you know you never know. There's so much happening in E3 that maybe I missed something. Maybe I saw it, but I didn't give it the time of day it needed, and maybe I would like it, and I just need someone to kind of bring it back up to me. You know, because you get lost in the announcements, and, all and there's stuff so happened. many of them. There is, and then and then of course Kingdom Hearts happened right before E3, and that stoked me all up, and I started I'm, getting hyped and. And regarding Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm not getting excited until I see a release date. That trailer did nothing for me because oh, I did not have a release good. date. I mean, so. I'm with you, but it looked great. So anyway, I guess that's going to be all for today's episode. So thank you for joining yes. us. Uh, and of course, we'll be back next week with episode 13. Don't know what it's going to be about yet, but we'll figure it out. We will. <laughs> if you got ideas, let us know. Until then, we'll think about some stuff. So uh, until next week, this has been Triangle Squared. Thank you. Thank you, guys.